Okay, hello and welcome back. Right, so I've got a piece of metal on here and I've got a welder and uh, it's wrapped in tin foil. And I'm not cooking chicken in this. What I'm actually doing is going to show you a trick which will help you remove bearing races if you don't have the correct puller. This is an age old trick and you have to do it quite uh, cool. Um, tin foil that's wrapped around this stiff carrier and it's just to make sure there's no splatter goes around it while I uh, weld around the bearing race. Now the whole idea is to uh, get this race so you've got a couple of tabs on it so you can then put a puller on it and pull the bearing race off like so. The problem is, is with our pullers we don't always get the right types unless you're going to pay a lot of money for the specific puller for the job. Right, so I do a lot of trailer hubs and uh, the bearing races inside, not on this one because they're easy to punch out, but I usually weld them out, then just tap them out, drop another race in very quickly, easy to do. Now, this is a uh, diff carrier and basically I've taken the rollers of this, so we have this uh, bearing left on here. Now, you have two tags here, which you could pull the uh, races off. However, we don't have that specialist tool. You can see the pegs here. You possibly could weld around it and then chisel it off. Uh, that's an option, especially since uh, weld heats it up. But what we have here is the input gear of the LT230. Now, I, I put a ring of weld around there, and I was actually going to knock it off with a hammer because it was that loose, and I left it to cool down. So I put an extra couple of tabs on it, and I'm going to pull it off. It should be easy enough to do. But I'm going to show you about this so you sort of generally get the idea. Some of you straight away already know what to do, so uh, it's not a problem. But the others... Um, Bear with me. Right, so this is my puller set, um, and I have an extra set here, which uh, obviously these legs uh, are a little bit too chunky. And also in this kit as well, I have the three-legged and the two-legged puller with extensions and, of course, the thread. Now, um, yeah, they're practical up to a point, but I'll show you why in a minute. Now, these bearing pullers, the ones with the ball bearings, you actually get more force if you have a ball bearing on here as it's not causing friction against metal surfaces, but you need a boss to put the ball bearing in. And you should be aware of this. If you've pulled the uh, crank on your 300 TDI, you'll know what this is all about because you have a boss in the kit, don't you? So looking at this gear, we have to make it up as we go along. Got a 27 mil socket, which uh, will fit against the splines there, and then the 27 mil security socket. Now it has a, uh, a laved piece here, which the ball bearing will fit in just nicely. And this is what we're looking for. Sockets and bits and pieces that you've got in your toolbox that will be of use. So the other thing is the feet will not um, latch behind the bearing cage. You could possibly pull this on three sides and actually pull the bearing off. You can see that very clearly there. So the best thing to do is to actually cut the cage and get rid of the rollers. So you'd end up with the other part of the race here. Now this is um, workable. Now this diff carrier has a peg, as I said, but unless you cut um, your puller kit, uh, it's going to be a problem. Now we also have uh, bearing clams, or clamps as they're called. I'm not actually sure what they're called, but I call them clams. And basically what we do is uh, put them underneath the bearing and then pull but um, you've got to have loads of uh, different sizes and this isn't the right size for what we need so that goes back in the kit um, if we're going to do any welding obviously we want to make sure that we don't damage the gears or any of the mating faces so we uh, use a tin foil and tin foil keep changing it if you're doing a lot of welding and you keep the amperage very very low i'm using um 2.5 mil rods uh, something like 70 amps and i'm not really putting too much heat in it and what i'm doing is i'll put a couple of runs in it and then let it cool down and then do it again basically you've got to weld evenly so you don't distort at all and you can see the welders running on 70 amps there and uh, what I've done, I actually ran a weld all the way around and then put two tags on it. And what we'll do from there, you see it's steaming hot, what we'll do from there is uh, cut some slots in it with a grinder. Now I'm not going to cut with the grinder and show you because I got sparks on a, a lens. But just take it from me, you use a, a grinding disc and make sure you cut some square flats as it were so we can pull on two sides you could do this uh, evenly for three-legged pullers not an issue um, this one will come off with a two-legged puller so you can see where the grinder has been 
and you can see where the leg will now fit in and it will grip. This is what we're after. We need something to pull on. So I've made myself uh, with a socket that fits and a uh, security wheel nut and I'm using a bar to push against so that's on the bench and I'm using this to uh, to lock it down so I'm not going to struggle and basically yeah just use a puller and wind it off and I'm just now demonstrating that the puller will actually pull okay and you can see that easy so I've oiled the threads and I'm now just going to chuck a little bit more oil in there just to make sure we have less friction and it helps to extend the life of the tool. So basically there we go, just wind it off and there it is, uh, bearing race off. So what the difference is, is I've not damaged this in any way whatsoever. It has been slightly hot and none of the areas which are working surfaces have been damaged. Now I did actually catch that with the welder, I'm going to have to clean that. And on this one which is the gear for the uh, transfer box that came off very very easily. And uh, you've just got to be aware not to put too much heat in it. So something like this obviously we have issues because of the length and the input shaft of the R380 is about a foot long, 300 millimetres, 30 centimetres. And uh, basically you need legs that are just a bit over. Unfortunately the kit I have won't do it as you can see here, which is uh, a pain. Another tip, if your bearing for instance goes on the uh, piss, it makes it more awkward to pull. The whole idea of using a puller is to uh, pull it um, evenly. You can actually see that the leg is um, not evenly distributed. Once you pull it a little bit, you can get the legs underneath the bearing race and then pull it the rest of the way evenly. So that's uh, easy enough. One more tip here is to uh, make sure that you haven't got the edge of your socket over the bearing race, for instance. Uh, otherwise that will not pull off and you'll just end up breaking your tool. So find the right socket for the job to do. All right, so I hope that's been helpful for you. Just remember to take care and not hurt yourself when you're pulling bearings off.